Are you prepared to commit a cardinal sin? Okay, so I read somewhere that fire is not a great element in Elden Ring, and that many bosses have a resistance to it. <laughs> if this is true, then can someone please explain this to me? My friends, we are dual wielding and power stancing magma blades, and we are quite literally melting bosses. I can't believe how powerful this build has turned out to be. The combat is also so simple. We power stance with the two magma blades giving us super fast successive hits, which will boost our attack power thanks to our talismans. Stay tuned for these. We are buffed by Flame Grant Me Strength, which is giving us 20% boost to physical and fire attacks, along with Golden Vow, giving us plus 15 attack power and plus 10 defense. And that's just the start. There are plenty more attack boosts and awesome damage multipliers to come in this video. In just a few minutes you will have this red hot build and you'll be ready to literally melt bosses and I'm going to cover the locations of the more important items of the build. My fellow tarnished, I give you the Magma Blade. First up, our weapons. So as mentioned, we have two Magma Blades. The Magma Blade is an awesome S-tier curved sword dealing fire and physical slash damage. It has a unique skill called Magma Shower, which costs 12 FP. It scales with Strength, Dexterity and Faith. Strength and Faith having the best scaling when maxed out at plus 10. You'll get the most AR scaling with Strength. Now, to get this bad boy, you can farm it by defeating Serpent Man enemies in the Volcano Manor, specifically the ones wielding orange glowing swords. This is a rare drop, so the fastest way is to get the wooden elevator activated outside the Temple of Eagle Site of Grace. Head up the elevator and head out to the right for the first enemy to farm. Then head back up and in through the door here to the second enemy in this corridor. Warp back, rinse and repeat until you get two of them. The awesome Magma Shower skill on the Magma Blades slashes at foes in a twirling motion while scattering magma all around. An additional input will allow for an awesome follow-up attack. In our offhand, we also have a switch to a Giant Seal plus 25. The Giant Seal is an awesome Giant's Flame incantation boosting seal that has S scaling for faith at plus 25. It can be found in the Giant Conquering Hero's Grave. When you get to the large hall with the troll, simply drop down either side of the platform into a room with a fire prelate enemy. Check the right side of the room for a corpse holding the giant seal. Right, whilst we're talking about stats and scaling, let's have a look at our starting class and stats before we go any further. At this point guys, I really hope you don't mind making my dreams come true by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. If you guys like my content even half as much as I like your comments, then I am one very proud content creator. I started with a profit class and our stats are Vigor at 60. This is the hard cap for our health, giving us a lot of survivability. Mind at 20. This gives us enough FP to cast Giant's Flame Take the 4 times or the Magma Shower Ash of War 10 times before chugging an FP flask. Endurance at 42. This gives us plenty of stamina to keep successive hits going and gives us multiple armor variations. Strength at 80. We want to hit this hard cap as this is our primary scaling stat for physical and fire damage. Dexterity at 10. We will boost this to 15 with Millicent's prosthesis. Not only will this give us the stats to wield the magma blades, but it will also help our attack boosting. Stay tuned for more on this. Intelligence we can leave at base. Faith at 50. This is the first hard cap for the fire damage scaling on the magma blades. And then finally arcane you can leave at base. Now then, let's look at our armor. For me, there really was only one armor setup, the Knight's Cavalry Helm with Malekith set. It's just pure Elden Bling with a scorched earth look, not to mention some decent defense and poise. I will link where to get these armor pieces in the description, as you really can decide yourself what you want to wear for this build. Our talismans, on the other hand, are way more important, so let's see what we have, what they do, and where to get them. We start with the Shard of Alexander. 
The Shard of Alexander has to be one of the best talismans in Elden Ring. It boosts damage of any skill by 15%. The Shard of Alexander will be your reward for completing Iron Fist Alexander's questline. This quest is easily done by simply exhausting his dialogue after the Radan boss fight, and then again where he appears in Mount Gelman near the Magma Worm. When you finally meet him later on in Crumbling Faramazula, you will duel with him and the Shard of Alexander will be your reward for defeating him. Next, we have the Fire Scorpion Charm. The Fire Scorpion Charm will increase all our fire damage by 12%. This talisman is found up the ramparts on a wooden platform to the west in Fort Lyoth within Mount Gelmer. It's nice and easy to get, but I'll leave a link anyway. Third is the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia. The Rotten Winged Sword Insignia is easily one of the best talismans in Elden Ring. I use it for so many builds. The Rotten Winged Sword Insignia will increase your attack power with the more successive hits you land. It has three tiers of attack power boosting, 6%, 8%, and 13%. The boost you get will depend on how much you're hitting consecutively. The Rotten Winged Sword Insignia is rewarded for completing Millicent's questline by choosing to side with her and defeating her sisters. I will drop a link in the description for this one. In our fourth slot we have Millicent's Prosthesis. Millicent's Prosthesis is an awesome talisman which not only boosts your attack power with the more successive hits you land, but it also gives you plus 5 to dexterity. You can get Millicent's Prosthesis by defeating her at the Windmill Heights site of Grace after defeating the Godskin Apostle there. Now the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia and Millicent's Prosthesis stack with their attack boosting from successive hits, but as you may have just realised, you can only get one of them per playthrough. So I think now would be a good time to mention my Discord server and the 2000 plus active members who I'm sure will be happy to drop you any gear you need to make this build. Come and join us, link in the description. Now no build will be complete without the Flask of Wondrous Physic taking our buffs to new heights, so let's have a look at what tiers we have equipped before we move on to our spells and incantations. In the Flask of Wondrous Physic we have first, the Flame Shrouding Cracked tier. The Flame Shrouding Cracked tier will boost our fire damage by 20%. You will get the Flame Shrouding Cracked tier by defeating the Putrid Avatar at the Minor Urtree in Kaelid, east of the Smouldering Church. Then we have the Thorny Cracked tier. The Thorny Cracked tier is going to boost our attack power with successive hits. And yes, you've guessed it, it is stacking with Rotten Winged Sword Insignia and Millicent's Prosthesis. Our damage multiplier is going through the roof right now. The Thorny Crack tier is dropped by the Putrid Avatar at the Minor Ur Tree in the Consecrated Snowfield, east of Ordina, the Turgical Town. There is more boosting to be done and more tricks up our sleeves. We have two support incantations and two offensive incantations to add to this build. I will link all information and locations in the description. As mentioned before, we have Flame Grant Me Strength and Golden Vow. Collectively, these bad boys are boosting our physical attack power by 35%, fire attack power by 20%, and our defense by 10%. As for offensive incantations, Giant's Flame Take Thee is a giant fireball that we can launch at bosses from a distance. This is boosted by our buffs, talismans, and our giant seal. And then we have Flame Fall Upon Them. This will throw out multiple fireballs, and for the best damage, you want to be at mid-range distance. Overall, this is a really cool looking, nice and tight build that boosts our damage output drastically and allows us the luxury of close, mid and long range combat. It's so simple as well. Two incantations and a chug of the physic and you're ready to fight anything. So, my question for all of you is, what can we do to make this build any better? I want to know your thoughts on it, what would you change about it, if anything? Get in the comments and let's get chatting. I would quickly like to sign off by thanking Ash Knight Fest for this incredible build. Legend.